Let's review the Lumigen Radiance Pro 5348 video processor. So credit where credit is due here, I want to say thanks first of all to Matt Blair, Blair High Performance Solutions for providing the loaner and demo opportunity to have this in my system for a period of time. Very much appreciated. And another shout out to Chris Deering from Deep Dive AV, Super Pro Expert Jedi Calibrator, who graciously gave a bunch of his time and effort to help me set this thing up, get it all working in my theater setup. And then of course we did the two and a half hour live stream where we broke this whole thing down on a deeply technical level. So check out the live. This video is gonna be more of a direct, succinct summary review. So what is a Lumigen? A Lumigen is a video processor, much like a Mad VR. We really pretty much only have two main choices for our home theater systems for this kind of device nowadays. That takes care of problems and provides extra special, super gravy on top type video processing for a home theater setup. Now, I use this in my front projection dedicated theater room. In that space is a JVC NX7 projector shooting onto a 163 inch diagonal sized scope aspect ratio screen. I have some specific challenges in my setup whereby I don't have the throw distance to fully fill my screen with the NX7 and the aspect ratio management between 178 and 185 and 20 and 22 and 24 is one of the areas where having this in my system really, really excelled. I've talked about video processors here or made reference to the idea of them for a long time, feeling that I had a pretty good setup uh, to begin with. Maybe I didn't really need a video processor. What's the value of a video processor? And particularly, what's the value of a video processor alone without also adding in an anamorphic lens? Is it worth it? What's it do? Well, I've answered all those questions for myself. If you want more detailed uh, information about the specific Lumigens, their types, their sizes, I would recommend for that, just go to lumigen.com and look at all the details there. I recommend you focus on the Radiance Pro line. There are two different levels of models. There's a 4000 there's a 4000 series and a 5000 series. Suffice to say there's not supposed to be any difference with regards to processing power, video processing capability or any of that. The main difference in the two units has to do with the 5000 series having basically a different build or maybe a different level of build quality, lower noise floors and all of that as well as some more advanced audio reclocking and capabilities. They also differ in the lines and from the four to the 5,000 in terms of the number of inputs and outputs available on the device. The 5348 is the biggest one with the most inputs and the most HDMI outputs. You may find like I do, or I did, that you don't necessarily need all of this. This is way more than I had need of. I use this with my Apple TV and my Kaleidoscape, two inputs and then one output to my projector. So for me, owning a Lumigen for the long term, something that I would buy and keep in my system permanently, I would most definitely not need the 5348, and you probably don't either. You would be able to spend less money and get away with less I.O., basically just buy what you need. Now in my setup, I have a couple of very specific uh, installation and logistical challenges. One, I don't have the throw distance to completely fill my screen. So when I zoom in the projector lens in order to try to fill the screen for scope content, I come up a little bit short. The other element is that in order to do those changing aspect ratios, in order to support those different aspect ratios, I have been using the lens memory of the projector, which means setting up different installation modes that you recall with the remote, or in my case as well with the Control 4, control system to have the projector zoom and shift and move things around and that takes time and it has to be done on a case-by-case content-by-content basis. That's the main uh, element of improvement that I was looking to see what exactly does a Lumigen do and I can say very succinctly it does a heck of a lot. So what Chris was able to accomplish with my setup was essentially the allowing me to use one single installation mode with the projector zoomed up as much as possible to fill as much of the screen in a scope based aspect ratio, but have the Lumigen process the pixel output for 178 to one and 185 to one content and wider. We basically calculated that the, the width of the screen that I was able to fill relative to the height of the actual screen itself put my effective aspect ratio at effectively 2.2. 
you can't set up a 2.2 aspect ratio without some type of a video processor like this. However, with it, I was really able to maximize the use of my screen, meaning regardless of the content type, the Lumigen was able to fill the field of my screen from top to bottom, regardless of the aspect ratio of the content, where before I would be stuck with some dead space all around. We did this by taking advantage of the, the pixel output, actually using the full 4096 wide pixel field of the JVC projector, not the regular kind of 4K 8, uh, UHD 3840 pixel width, and having the Lumigen kind of zoom up or zoom down and move and shift things around as it needed to, to again, always maximize the height, taking advantage of the constant image height screen. And I'm gonna overlay a little bit of video in a couple of pictures here to kind of show this off. So the nice part is for anything basically smaller than 2.2, 178 to 1, 185 to 1, 2.0 to 1, the Lumigen would be able to maintain the height and I would just have a little bit more width um, as the picture got wider. However, as, as soon as we pass 2.2, we get to 235, we get to 240, the Lumigen is able to expand that image in the pixel space of the projector. I lose a little bit of information on the left and right. However, I'm now able to fill the screen from top to bottom always. And it really made for a more impactful use of my screen using those pixels, getting that extra light, and only having the dead space there over on the sides, not above. So if you look at some of these pictures from the Empire Strikes Back, first of all, we have kind of just the full field scope aspect ratio presentation of Empire Strikes Back, in this case running on the Kaleidoscape. But in the next picture, you can see I paused it on the Kaleidoscape, which actually brings up a little pause tag in the upper right hand corner, but we only see the PAUS, that's because here again, the Lumigen was, was bringing the picture to be a little bit bigger so that we filled a vertical space and we put a little bit of picture information off the screen. I think that's a trade-off that I am perfectly fine and okay making for the purposes of that vertical fill. Nice thing about the Kaleidoscape, as you can see in this third picture, is when you pull up the info screen, Kaleidoscape does a really, really great job of trying to keep their overlays and their information in the actual image space of the, the movie or the content being shown. So in this case, we don't actually need the Lumigen to help us do anything to access menus or other details that might have been off of the screen in a normal zoom, zooming up type of scenario. You can still see as well the PAUS, the E is off the screen. So we're pushing a little information off wide in order to fill everything top to bottom. Now in these next two pictures, I'll show Transformers the movie, the 1980s, uh, the 1980s film. This movie is in 185 to one aspect ratio. In here paused, you can see the entire pause tag of the Kaleidoscape. But again, we're filling the vertical information, but, the, but we're not pushing information off of the horizontal field of view of the projector itself. And it's just so nice to have all of this stuff automatically taken care of on the fly, no adjustment, no grabbing extra remotes. Anybody in the household can come down to the theater, start a movie, and be guaranteed to see the right thing, filling the field of view as much as possible on the projector. And again, if we bring up the info screen with the Kaleidoscape, with the Lumigen on the screen, we see the entirety of the info screen, nothing lost, and everything is being set pixel-wise and field of view-wise in what's available with the actual screen throw. And I'll put this up as well. We can see here the Kaleidoscape UI. The cool thing about Kaleidoscape, they allow you to adjust the menu system and a couple of other things for different types of screens. And because of the simplicity of having the Lumigen manage all of the aspect ratios, it's really easy to switch back and forth between the Apple TV with the forced 16 by nine menu system and UI and the Kaleidoscape with a scope based menu system and UI. Just awesome. If I, if I were doing this without a Lumigen changing back and forth between these sources, it would involve more manual shifting, lens memory recall, or some triggers in my control system and waiting for all of that to happen. So to demonstrate just how good the auto aspect ratio management and how useful this stuff is, I've got a little snippet here of Black Adam. This is actually playing on the Apple TV. This is an extra wide scope movie which means that when it's, when it's played, when it's showed by the Lumigen, the Lumigen is gonna pull all of that uh, image up, you know, make it up as large and all of that as it can possibly be. 
and it's going to push all of the Apple TV menus off of the bottom of the projected image. Again, Kaleidoscape, no problem with this. They put all of the stuff within the image field. Apple TV, not so smart for this type of a home theater viewing environment. However, when you have a Lumigen, the auto aspect ratio management is always looking for things in the black bars, in the black field. And as soon as it finds something that it knows or it thinks is picture information, boom, it's going to pop it right back down. And you can see how fast this happens. It's, it's basically instantaneous. So if you need to access the Apple TV menus, you can do so. You can see everything. If I did this in my setup without a Lumigen, all of that Apple TV menu information is, is gone. It's in the black space. It's masked off down below the screen. And if I want to see it, I would have to basically lens memory recall to a different setting, wait, in order to interact with it. This makes using the system just so more, automate, so more automated, so more seamless, and just... Uh, just nicer. Now I want to show off one more thing that really makes this just so nice to have. I've got the boys TV show on Amazon Prime. It's not quite fully scope. It's not quite 16.9. It's somewhere in between there. And when I start playing, uh, if I were to start playing a piece of content like this, I would be waiting a lot longer and have to again be doing that manual interaction to get the image properly on the screen. I would have to start the playback. There would be more stuff happening between what the projector is doing and its own processing and preparations and syncing, color filters moving into place, lens memory recalls. But with the Lumigen, we go black for a much shorter period of time than we would otherwise. But again, watch, watch towards the end of this. As soon as the image is up on the screen in kind of its native pixel filling space, the Lumigen detects that, realizes that it has more room to expand this image and make it larger in the screen and instantly, bam, it does it. All right, one more demo here, pesky subtitles. Now, when you're using devices like a Kaleidoscape, again, so good for, for home theater projection-based integrations, a Kaleidoscape is going to always put subtitles in the image field of the content being shown. And you don't have to worry that you're missing something, you're not seeing something, but streaming services and the like in other applications, perhaps, that are playing your video may not always do that. Case in point, the same thing, the same show actually, we're gonna look at the boys here. Amazon, in their infinite stupidity, decided to put the subtitles for the boys half in the image, half out of the image, which means they're down in some of that black space below the image. So if you were watching this show, as I actually did in my home theater, and you need to read those subtitles because one of the characters in the show is basically mute and she uses sign language, that information is going to be cut off below the screen in the mask and you're not going to see it or you're going to be stuck looking for the remote, shifting, zooming back down into a certain mode where you would be able to see and read all those subtitles. Well, if you have a video processor, no problem, right? The video processor is constantly analyzing, the Lumigen is constantly looking for data in the black field. As soon as it sees it, boom, we pop back up and as soon as it goes away, boom, we pop back down. So you're never going to miss a subtitle. You're never going to miss important picture information that you may need seeing a movie. And I guess ignorance is bliss, but if you were watching in a normal zoomed up, masked, fixed installation mode, you may never actually know that something happens in the black space because you're just never going to see it. Now, you could argue that maybe you don't like the picture constantly squishing and expanding and squishing and expanding. The reality is like for this show, for example, there's really not that much. I mean, it's the dialogue of one character that brings in the, the subtitles, brings in the sign language. And so maybe I'm okay with a little squishing and expanding back because the majority of the show, probably 95% of the show, it's not gonna be doing that. The nice thing about a video processor and a Lumigen in this case is I also have a lot of freedom and control over how I want it to actually operate. Meaning I can, on the fly, I can have all of this set up, programmed, ready to work, stable, in the box, but then I can override some of the commands. So as soon as I saw those first subtitles, no problem, grab the Lumigen remote, fix to an aspect ratio, and it's gonna stay there for the remainder of the content or until I disable that setting. Very nice, super flexible. Again, the whole point of this thing is about taking your home theater experience and making it elegant, making it simple, making it frustration free, and basically making it borderline hands off. Now, a lot of folks, when they have a device like this, they like to fill the entirety of their screen all the time. And of course, Lumigen has an option for NLS, what they call nonlinear stretch, 
with some configurability and some options around it, but you can basically choose to have the Lumigen, not only in my case, like always fill the vertical space, but also always fill the horizontal space. I'll show this off basically on the Apple TV menu here, kind of jumping in and out of the stretched, uh, non-linear stretched mode versus like the standard kind of 16.9 mode. Now this is a little more noticeable. It's probably a little more egregious of a modification to the image when you're in a menu versus when you're in content. However, I will say I played with this a little bit and I'm, I'm just a purist. I will take the regular aspect ratio of my content, whatever it is, uh, even if it's not full wide and not filling my entire screen left to right. I do really feel it is superior to be filling the screen top to bottom, but I am okay honoring aspect ratio and not filling the screen fully left to fully right. Some people really swear by this. They love it. They use it for everything. And hey, if that's your, if that's your gig, if that's your thing, more power to you. But I did not find these features. Um, I did not find this feature to be something that I would be using at all uh, with this or probably any other video processor that I might try. Now, the other thing I'm sure that people want to hear about is HDR processing and tone mapping. And probably the big question, right, is the tone mapping of the Lumigen better than the tone mapping of the JVC? I will give you a confident, I have no freaking idea. Honestly, I watched a bunch of content on my JVC. I think it looks great. I watched a bunch of content on the Lumigen. I think it looks great too. The, night, the, the preferable thing about having the Lumigen do the HDR processing though is the fact that the projector doesn't have to do anything. Meaning we were able to set this up for BT2020 color space, no color filter on the JVC for maximizing brightness on the screen, which means that getting HDR up on the screen is a much faster endeavor going through the Lumigen than going through the JVC itself. The image looks bright, the image looks great, the tone mapping looks good. I am very happy with the tone mapping that the Lumigen provided. I am also very happy with the tone mapping that the JVC provides. It's really, really hard to call something superior over another when you can't really compare it back to back. It's not easy, I think, to just naturally like switch back and forth between these. There's lag time and resync time and stop and start time and reconfiguration time. I don't think I can really do it justice with the visual memory of trying to go back and forth between these things. I can say that I would have full faith in the tone mapping algorithms of the Lumigen probably more so than the JVC overall because it is a purpose-driven device. It is going to be arguably more powerful in the processing department than probably the chip and the computation and the general video processing oomph of the JVC. But in terms of any like A to B comparisons, very hard to say. And in my limited time, I just wasn't really able to put those things up back to back. That all said, I think the real, real benefit of this device isn't necessarily in the area of picture quality or picture quality enhancement. I think honestly, it really has to do with the integration pieces. Chris Deering said it really well, I think, in the live stream that we did, and that the Lumigen is a problem solver. A video processor is a problem solver. And all of its capabilities and options and all of that is, is the accumulation of years and years and years of this product being on the market and Lumigen themselves like seeing different installation challenges and setup challenges and gear and evolving video standards and all of this and upgrading the device with the times and solving all of those problems that have appeared as we go. As stated, my big problem is aspect ratio management and trying to fill my screen and maximize the use of my screen. And I will confidently say that the Lumigen, a video processor, absolutely does that so much better than not having one at all. And to the point of one of my other long-standing questions, this thing is absolutely, absolutely of value in the system without an anamorphic lens. I think I understand this a little bit better now myself. And I think the real value of an anamorphic lens comes from getting brightness back. And that's really what it's all about. You don't have to have the anamorphic lens benefit from a video processor in your system Again, if that video processor is helping you solve challenges, solve problems, and resolve integration issues to maximize the use of your system that you otherwise are not able to overcome in their entirety. I would also just say that my general approach to home theater and my setups, I really strive for simplicity. I strive for like fewer number of boxes, doing fewer things. I don't necessarily want 
all kinds of overprocessing. I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a purist in that way. So the, ultimately, then the value of this device for me, it's really about those integration challenges, and it's not about trying to stack up a whole bunch of extra image processing for image improvement on top of those other aspects. So this has been a really really cool experiment. I absolutely give a device like this a thumbs up for your system. If you think that it can help you solve some problems, absolutely check it out. Call Matt, call Chris, and see if this is the right kind of solution for you. Now I have to decide for myself, do I want one of these things, and what is it going to take to be able to afford one? So we'll see what happens with that here coming up, and I'm particularly interested to see how do I like using the system without this thing doing all of that stuff to make the system elegant and automatic. How quickly am I going to tire of managing lens memories, having vital picture information shoved off the bottom of my screen that I may like to be able to see and access when I'm using my theater room and watching content. I think that could be the ultimate driving force that sees me wanting to put a video processor of my own in my system now sooner than later. So sound off in the comments. Let me know what you think. What questions do you have? What else would you like to hear me talk about with regards to the Lumigen? Hopefully coming up as well, I'll get to experience the other side of the tracks, try out a Mad VR, and, and have, have had the experience of using both of them. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, if you'd like to help me buy a Lumigen, please look down in the description below. There's super thanks, Amazon affiliate links. You're shopping at Amazon, you're shopping at Audio Advice, other places, use my affiliate links. Otherwise, please do all that regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, share the video, comment away. Thanks so much for watching and coming back for more home theater discussion and fun.